Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition's top stories. The National Mills Program gains momentum. The national healthcare system to provide a more robust response to COVID-19. And the Ministry of Education forges ahead with the commencement of the third term. Hello and thank you for joining us at the Information Command Center for the national response to COVID-19 as we bring you the latest developments. The National Mills Program is gaining momentum. The program that began on Easter Sunday, according to Prime Minister of St. Lucia, the Honorable Alan Chastney, is geared towards feeding the underprivileged. The Prime Minister indicated that the program is expected to eventually feed some 5,000 people. Details in this report. The government of St. Lucia continues its strategic response to the COVID-19 pandemic which includes taking care of the most vulnerable in our society. Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney announced in the Social Stabilization Plan that hot meals prepared by chefs and cooks from hotels and restaurants are part of the new National Meals Program, which began on Easter Sunday. The SLHTA is also collaborating with the Ministry of Agriculture, other private sector associations, non-governmental and service organizations to undertake a National Meals Program. The first phase of the program will begin this Easter Sunday with a limited rollout. However, the program will eventually feed up to 5,000 underprivileged persons who are on that single list on a daily basis using produce from our local farmers. The National Meals Program, spearheaded by the St. Lucia Hotel Tourism Authority, together with the Ministry of Agriculture, saw the opening up of hotel kitchens for the preparation of food to be distributed throughout the length and breadth of the island. The soul of this project are the many farmers and fishers who will get a market for their produce during this time of uncertainty. CEO of SLHTA, Nurani Aziz, expressed that this National Meals Program is an excellent example of public and private sector collaboration, provides an opportunity for the hospitality industry to keep active, and to give back to the country. The SLHTA essentially reached out to a number of our hotels which have since been closed and a few other restaurants as well as uh, kitchens around the island to enlist their support to donate their time and their resources to literally cook and prepare the meals and to prep them for distribution and consumption. In addition to that, we also assisted in costing out the meals and presented the various ministries with the necessary information regarding the procurement needs, as well as the volume of ingredients to, to serve as inputs to the meal preparation. We also assisted in enlisting the support of a few tourism transportation providers who assisted in transporting the ingredients from point A to point B. The National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, was responsible for logistics and dispatch and worked closely with the Ministry of Social Transformation in ensuring that meals reach those in need. The initiative took off very well. We were able to get the food to the various drop-off points. Castries, for instance, the Castry City Council, was responsible for delivering to the various communities within the Castries area. A total of 15 hotels took part, their Bay Gardens, Jake's in Rodney Bay, Sanders Grand, um, Serenity Vacation, Coco Palm Landings, Windjammer, June Catering, Pink Papaya, Rendezvous, Marigo Bay Re Resort, Moyan S, Ladera Resort, Jade Mountain, Fordu, and Coconut Bay. All of these hotels came together to provide the meals for um, those persons. We would like to thank um, also the Cadet Corps who came on board to deliver these meals to the various communities. They did a wonderful job in getting those meals to those persons. And so NIMO, um, together with the Cadet Corps, Event St. Lucia and SLHTA came together to ensure that those meals get out to those persons who were in need of the meal on Easter Sunday. I believe that this initiative is a great one. It will continue. The National Meals Program 
is just one of the initiatives by the government to provide relief and to keep St. Lucia's economy going. Reporting for the Office of the Prime Minister, I am Danielle Dubois. As the Department of Health and Wellness continues to respond to the global pandemic of COVID-19, the national healthcare system has been adapted to allow for a more robust response to COVID-19. More in this report. As of 18, 2020, St. Lucia has on record a total of 15 confirmed cases of COVID-19, 11 of whom have recovered. On Thursday, April 16, 2020, the test results for 25 samples for COVID-19 were received and they were all negative. St. Lucia continues the partial shutdown and 10-hour curfew, which spans the time period 7 p.m. to 5 a.m. daily. This forms part of the national effort to protect public health as St. Lucia is still at a very critical stage in the response to the COVID-19 threat. The Department of Health and Wellness warns that the nation still needs to remain vigilant and be guided that the threat of COVID-19 to our nation's health is real and still exists and to act accordingly. Bearing this in mind, the Chief Medical Officer in the Department of Health and Wellness, Dr. Sharon Belmar-George, explained that the healthcare system has been adapted to provide a more vigorous response to COVID-19. New pathways to care have been created and the public is asked to utilize these as required to access care. The 311 hotline is available to provide general information of COVID-19 and access points of care and support. The 311 service is available seven days a week and function from 7 a.m. to midnight daily. A review of the utilization of the services of this hotline indicates that 90% of the calls offer guidance and linkage to available services for the management of signs and symptoms of the virus. This has resulted in onward transfer of these clients to our telemedicine services and to our community respiratory clinics. The telemedicine services are delivered by physicians via mobile phones to allow for the delivery of telephone triaging of persons who are experiencing flu-like symptoms and require an initial level of assessment and direction to points of care. The numbers of these physicians have been made available to various media houses and official media platforms, including the social media sites of the Department of Health and Wellness and the Government of St. Lucia. Persons with flu-like symptoms can access care at the closest respiratory clinics. The five existing respiratory clinics are at the Grosily Polyclinic, Larkleri Wellness Centers, Denry Hospital, Buford Wellness Center, and the Sufre Hospital. The services at Denry and Sufre Hospitals and the Larkleri and Buford Wellness Centers are available daily Monday to Friday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Services at the Grosile Polyclinic are available daily from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., including weekends. The respiratory clinic services are also available at the Victoria Hospital and the St. Jude Hospital. And these can be utilized by persons with respiratory issues, but requiring care outside of the normal hours of operations at the clinics within the community. All respiratory cases coming into the hospital facilities will be screened and redirected for care and services as required. All of these services to support the management of the COVID-19 is provided to the user at no cost. The Ministry of Health, we encourage all persons who deem themselves to be in need of any of these services to access them in a timely manner to minimize any possibility of risks related to COVID-19. The Department of Health and Wellness advises the public to adhere to the standard recommendations to prevent the spread of infection. We now hear from Chief Medical Officer in the Department of Health and Wellness, Dr. Sharon Belmar-George, as to what to do if you feel ill. In the management of COVID-19, there are actions that must be taken if you begin to feel unwell. First, you must monitor your symptoms. If you develop respiratory symptoms such as fever, cough, runny nose, sneezing, sore throat, call one of the clinical support telephone numbers for advice. If the medical care provider tells you that the symptoms are mild, please follow the recommended steps of care. If your symptoms are moderate to severe, you will be advised to go to the respiratory clinic closest to you. 
Wear a face mask when leaving the house, especially if you are coughing or sneezing. This will prevent others from getting the infection. We recommend regular hand washing and the use of hand sanitizer when away from home. Also, avoid direct contact with others and also to reduce touching other surfaces. When going to the medical facility, please go directly to the medical provider. Do not sit among the other patients. Testing and treatment and care to persons with COVID-19 is free of charge. Work with the Ministry of Health and Wellness as we reduce the impact of COVID-19 on you and your families. For further information, please contact the Bureau of Health Education at 468-5347, 468-5349 or 468-5350. That was Chief Medical Officer in the Department of Health and Wellness, Dr. Sharon Belmar George. This is NTN Nightly. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. Here are some tips on what you need to do to reduce the risk of getting COVID 19 while you're grocery shopping. On your way into the supermarket or shop, remember to wash or sanitize your hands. You may want to think about sanitizing your trolley too. When you're shopping, don't touch the produce unless you're buying it. And please, do not touch your face. Try your utmost to keep your distance from other shoppers and staff. Six feet is best. Let's go through who should be doing the shopping. If you're not feeling well, you should not be there. If you're elderly or have a compromised immune system, please proceed with caution. And if you're healthy enough to shop, maybe think about picking up a few items for those you know who can't. As for when to shop, where possible, avoid peak hours in order to avoid overcrowding. In addition to food, it's a good idea to have enough cleansers and other supplies to last a few weeks. Stock up on over-the-counter or prescription medication you may need. And don't forget, on your way out of the shop or supermarket, wash or sanitize your hands again. Remember, keep your trips to the supermarket or shop to an absolute minimum. And when you do get home, you might want to give your fruit and vegetables an extra good scrub. Explore options for online shopping and consider using delivery, order online and just pick up. Together, we can mitigate against the spread of COVID-19. Welcome back. The Ministry of Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labor said that although employers reserve the right to send staff on leave, having given them seven days notice, it recommends that be done after discussions with employees amidst the growing pandemic. In a statement on April 16, the Ministry advised that employers not request staff to proceed on vacation amidst the partial scale-down of activities due to the virus. The Ministry said that the situation is unique and a cause of undue stress and hardship to both employers and employees. As such, the circumstances surrounding this pandemic are not conducive for vacation. The Ministry of Labor noted that while there is no legal requirement to pay wages during the partial or complete shutdown, employers may consult with their employees towards utilizing these days as paid vacation days, and if both parties agree, then the agreement should be committed to in writing. The COVID-19 pandemic continues to pose several challenges to various sectors, including the education sector. Officials from the Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development recently appeared on the National Television Network, indicated that despite the many challenges, the Ministry of Education is forging ahead with the commencement of the third term of school. Anisia Antoine tells us more. The impact of COVID-19 has resulted in the second school term of the academic year 2019-2020 ending abruptly. Due to the change in the landscape of the education system, the third school term will commence on the 20th of April 2020. Local and regional examinations have also been affected as the minimum standards tests have been cancelled. 
The Permanent Secretary within the Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, Michelle Charles, noted that the seating of the common entrance examinations is dependent on pronouncements from the Ministry of Health. The exam, at the time when it's being administered, it would, we would have allowed sufficient time for students and teachers to become academically and psychologically ready to write the exam. The exam, of course, will, it's been restructured, being reviewed as we speak, and so it, it will comprise solely of the multiple choice components. And that has been, this has been worked on by our examination units alongside our curriculum and assessment officers. I know many persons are concerned about what happens with CSEC and CAPE, and I just want to indicate that the governments of the region are still in dialogue with the Caribbean Examination Council, and as soon as a decision is made relating to that, a pronouncement will, made be, will be made locally, and persons will be given the information at that point. Majority of the secondary school students have been accessing Google Classrooms, as well as other methods of e-learning. The Permanent Secretary explained that prior to the COVID-19 outbreak, e-learning measures were already being strengthened via the e-book pilot project. We would have started that pilot in February of this year, where the first set of students would have gotten the devices, and we would have looked to do a second pilot, well, the second part of that pilot in September, exposing more students to the use of the e-books. Given the challenge that we're currently facing, we're contemplating using those devices for the teachers and some of the students who have indicated that they are having challenges getting devices. But we will continue to monitor the use of that device. It allows students, it's not just a, a, a reading um, tablet just or, or a, reading, a reading device. It allows the students to do so much more. It allows them to access the various Microsoft suites, plus allow them to do their virtual labs and the books also contain text that's aligned with the CSEC syllabus. So students are well-placed. Students who have the learn book are well-placed to be able to continue their own learning. Students are also encouraged to activate the email addresses set via their individual schools. Chief Education Officer Fiona Meyer commended the teachers who have been reaching out to their students with the distribution of instructional material and tele-tutorials despite the challenges being faced. Maya encouraged parents to find creative ways to engage their child or children during this time. Early childhood and all of our centers, the majority of which are privately owned, had to be closed down based on the, the threat and the risk associated with COVID-19. We note that without a foundation, nothing else will, will work in terms of educational support thereafter. So we want to applaud our early childhood sector practitioners and say to them, we recognize your efforts, but we continue to encourage parents to look at their really little young ones and to say, engage in play-based learning. Sometimes we think children are just playing, but within that time prior to schooling, it, formal schooling that is, it is really about doing various activities that are fun for the children, that are engaging for them, that are based on their interests. And you would note that all of those skills, numeracy, literacy, social skills, are developed through play. So let us be patient with ourselves, with our little ones, and really engage them moving forward so that the foundation continue to be built upon. Based on feedback from the school principals island-wide, nutritional plans are also being put in place for vulnerable families. The chief education officer made an appeal to entities who are able to contribute towards the cause to contact the Ministry of Education. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. We now join Primus Hutchinson for today's Nouvelle Aquayol. Monsieur Tarin Janel, Monsieur Madame, Département qui est une responsabilité pour les formations en gouvernement, c'est le GIS, Assembly Television National PIA, NTN, Capuzato, Nouvelle Aquayol. Capuzato, Primus Hutchinson. Compagnie des affaires business FIG, Winfresh, a d'ailleurs une meilleure position pour honorer la responsabilité pour les cultivateurs FIG à cette ci Ça, c'est parce que le gouvernement PIA et le ministère de l'Agriculture a pris une décision pour aider Winfresh et puis un million de dollars pour payer les femmes FIG qui ont cadré pour plus de six semaines à présent. Le ministre des affaires agricoles, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, fait comprendre que 
gouvernement prend une décision ça là en considération maladie corona qui a menacé le pays à présentement et la situation c'est que le directeur a même qui a continué à vendre fig sans jeune paiement on a Joseph dit que malgré yo fait présentation ça là dans des situations qui a qui a concerné le gouvernement toujours il y a un million de dollars ça nous a bail aujourd'hui c'est juste un commencement parce que nous savons that win fresh doit plus passer un million de dollars en um, baisse assez de formation de l'infant de l'infant, c'est 2.2 millions de dollars. Ma sœur, tu as plus passé ça. So, il est important qu'on nous ait ici pour ça, mais il est aussi important pour nous ait restructurer Winfresh, so Winfresh, car ça fait um, ça y est là pour faire. Ça y est là pour faire. Moi, ça dit que l'année, dès les autres, le Premier ministre en pays de l'Ivan et puis le Premier ministre de cette ici qui a d'accord que nous pouvions ça qu'a fait à Winfresh et puis nous avons nous avons restructuré Winfresh et puis c'est maintenant qu'à venir, nous avons fait des meetings ça et puis nous avons qui ça a fait pour restructurer Winfresh. Parce que nous voulons dire que pour nous continuer à faire ces là il est important pour nous avoir une compagnie comme Winfresh pour marquer ces nous en pays en pays en Angleterre. Quand nous savons, c'est celle-ci seulement qui a fait affaire fixe là pour actuellement. Mais comme ça dit ici à Jordi, à l'année, l'autre pays, le pays de l'île d'Ivan, qui est intéressé pour vendre fixe en Angleterre. Donc, si nous ne pouvons pas restructurer Winfresh, nous ne pouvons pas accomplir l'objectif. Donc, je veux dire, Jordi, nous avons eu un million de dollars pour l'advance de paiement. Pour la Winfresh qui a eu un FTO. Et puis, la an, ça, c'est un loan nous hen from Invested ici. Parce que quand nous savons, le gouvernement a mis des plans ensemble pour ça supporter Pharma, pas seulement Pharma Fig tout seul, mais Pharma General, en affaire COVID-19. Mais la an, ça, là, nous hen ni, nous avons vu et Invested ici, 1 million de dollars. Le chairman pour NFTO, Justice Monroe, a déclaré qu'il était plein pour la présentation ça là parce que les cultivateurs et bien Pharma Fig déjà souffert assez et particulièrement en tant qu'on à présent les Covid-19 c'est un mauvais chagrin de cervelle mon rose tenir autant félicitations pour le gouvernement avec moi ça le gouvernement a déjà délivré à tout ça et puis le premier ministre Aricol là on a basique Joseph il était devant ça et c'est lui qui a poussé ça avec moi ça le vraiment et j'ai délivré avec Fama qui est bien content pour ça demain. Et bien, Peter Jordia, si l'on relation avec Banque, il y a ça à aller à Banque là pour jouer, ça y est, pour jouer. Et bien, c'est Credit Union, n'importe institution, institution financière, côté où il y a 10 lépi, et qui a joué l'argent pour, sur ça, le supermarché, pour acheter ça, il y a besoin, pour mener au flou. Covid virus 19, ça a difficulté, ça a un problème, ça a un problème. Donc, à fait ça, actuellement. Je so, voulais oui, remercier tous ces femmes qui ont patience là pour SP. Mais par la grâce de Dieu, quand on a le gouvernement a déjà délivré. Encore, encore, cette lecture, j'ai trouvé conseil pour ne pas arriver tout partout de l'entente de payer à la direction. Eh bien, que fait C'est le chef de police, cette lecture, Milton Desi, qui fait appel à ça, de l'entente de face à public à la télévision NTN. Chef police Daisy, expliquez qui gouvernement considéré pour quitter magasin ouvert pour vendre matériaux et divers outils qui nous ni brisé pour travailler kai principalement quand nous avons expérimenté un carême qui brutal. Il dit aussi nous ni brisé manger avec divers nécessités devant temps ça là mais généralement Kofioa a opération toujours et c'est faux public là obéit c'est ouais là qui en place c'est si pas ça. Il y a une compte devant la loi. Et puis, ça, il y a un peu brisé, c'est de manger premier. Et quand il y a un brisé, il y a un peu ouvert pour les gens qui vendent des plombs électriques parce que nous savons que nous avons un petit peu qui pète, nous avons un peu pour manger un bol brûlé, nous avons un peu pour replacer. Et puis, aussi, il y a un drought qui dit. Yo di nukai ni drought pi kai bien move so si uni ang usagen yung tank pumete so that nukai nukai sa pawi dlo so nukai ma demon pu weste aduida epi sa upasi pose fe pa fe nuni polis la kai yung lechimea epi si upaka si upaka obey 
pièce euh, c'est loi Sara ou qu'a joué à et puis comme euh, moi a dit avant depuis ou a été nous qu'a um, fait ouais qui ça pour y vivre devant um, majestoire ah. chef police des a aussi fait public la save qui pièce cabaret pas supposé opérer devant tant ça là parce que gouvernement j'assiste pas le sens yo a ba wèg ki ka gouverner situation malade corona présentement bon lay vini pou ba ba mm -hmm. pas supposé si ouvert pièce mm -hmm. because um yo a prend licence licence la on ya ça nous a prié ça spendent so ou pas ni licence pour vendre so pas supposé vendre now lani um lani boutique ki en d yo ni Yon yon marchand dis yon side et yon yon l'autre side là so um, ou pas si pose epis ou sa si ou sa kouve yon la okay. mette yon bouet mette yon kote pou moun pa y pa tante moun pou yon pou yon mando pou li so mm -hmm. um, so sa ou ni pou um, komplaye pi mm -hmm, mm -hmm. nou ka osi di um, lani lani l'autre kote ki pas si pose ouve an efor pour continuer à contrôler l'habilité malade du corona. Pour s'y manger, le ministère de la Santé a encouragé le public à associer Nedita qui est l'hôpital Owen King et le Wellness Center qui est ouvert. C'est Nedita qui est l'hôpital Owen King qui est ouvert pour le public là, pour visiter les maladies. C'est seulement yon dimi Nedita. Ça c'est 6h du matin pour 6h30 et midi après-midi pour midi et demi. Là, il y a une pièce de visitation les soirées. Pour cette salle. Commencez lundi, le 20 avril, l'hôpital Owen King a ouvert pour tout service pour les patients qui ont visité pour traitement. Mais ouais, pour obéir à la distance sociale qui continue, ce n'est pas appointement, c'est pas appointement seulement qui les gens qui ont visité. Les officiers de l'hôpital là, qui ont fait contact et puis les pour appointement neuf. Le ministère de la Santé a conseillé pour faire assurer que ces patients là ont un appointement neuf salles et qui viennent à l'air. Toute l'opération, j'ai trouvé au suspens présentement, et c'est seulement l'opération des secours qui a trouvé attention. Commencé mardi le 21 avril, l'hôpital là qui a adressé maladie sévère qui a ouvert pour les patients qui a été en cas et qui a demandé tant de souplé pour ces patients là et la famille pour faire assurer qu'ils suivent les qui en place pour visiter l'hôpital là. Donc, on m'a dit, pour tout le monde qui a conduit le business, l'hôpital Owen King et l'hôpital des maladies sévères, pour obéir à ce qui est en place contre la maladie corona. Les ménagements qui ont conseillé tout le monde pour porter masse à souffrir de mon temps, ils ont visité. Et c'est comme ça, nous avons à toi votre nouvelle, monsieur et madame. Je vous remercie autant pour garder, je vous remercie pour l'invitation. Je ne peux pas encore, si vous avez la vie, vous avez besoin de l'autre nouvelle à Kouyol. Je vous remercie tout. A bon finis ma semaine et comme nous toujours cadeau, pour précaution, laver la main toutes les chebe ma sa fille jayou et pour toute qualité pour caution pour préserver corps et la famille. La cible pour vous présenter au général. Merci à Pil Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.